Hello and welcome back everyone. Sorry for being gone for a while. Today we're going to be talking about everyone's favorite Cambian, Raphael. But more importantly, what a Cambian actually is and how they tie into Baldur's Gate 3. To start things off, did you know the word Cambian actually originated from the ancient Celtic root word for crooked and exchange? By the time the 13th century came around, this is where changelings became a thing as babies replaced at birth by Cambian babies and was considered a common explanation for those who were very unruly and never satisfied. Amazingly, for those who believed in demons, it was thought that to create a Cambian, a succubus had to take the seed of a man, give it to an incubus to corrupt that seed, and then implant that seed back into a female human. This reasoning was largely due to the belief that since demons didn't have physical bodies, they couldn't outright create life. But enough of that. Let's get over to our handsome man Raphael and learn more about him. Over the years, both in realms lore and in D&D classifications, the term Cambian has changed multiple times. Some would consider true Cambians to be the offspring of a plain-touched woman and one of the dominant races of demons from the Abyss, while others would be considered a brand of nobility if sired by a demon lord and a female half-fiend, usually a tiefling. Meanwhile, after the events of the Spell Plague, the meaning of Cambian changed to mean the union of a devil and a mortal female. Sadly, after the rabbit hole of research I found myself in, it looked like Cambians across the board are just a broad mix of something like one-third or one-fourth of their heritage being mortal, while the rest is some sort of mix of outsider bloodlines with emphasis on demons and devils. Although Cambians themselves can breed with each other, they usually sought out mortal mates to create tiefling children. I suppose in regards to the hierarchy of fiend bloodlines, this would be how a true tiefling is made as opposed to the general population we get to meet in the game. Just going by the eyes though, I'd say Zevlor makes the cut as a true tiefling. But of course, like any half-breed of an outsider race, your additional strengths are largely determined by your bloodlines. Meaning you could look the part with enhanced physical traits and nothing else, or you could look the part and wield incredible powers that allow you to become an expert assassin, great leader, uh, information broker, or literally anything. Regardless of the path they chose in life, they were always exceedingly ambitious and were often the catalyst for major events in the world. Although a good Cambion isn't impossible, these beings are usually always evil aligned and grow up as a bitter twisted loner due to not being accepted by either society that they were born from. The upside to one of them being born on the material plane is a chance at having freedom in their lives. Sadly, if they were born and abandoned in the abyss, they'd grow up constantly being abused by other demons and I can't imagine that route yielding a high survival rate for them in general. Being abandoned in hell though, they would at least have a chance to be used as soldiers in the Blood War. And now that Zariel is in charge of Avernus, I feel like any discrimination from Devilkin may have gone down a bit. We've actually met a number of Cambians already. There was the one that we briefly met in the dungeons underneath Am in the second game, the two siblings we defeated in Icewind Dale 2, and of course, Raphael and the group accompanying Commander Zalk in the starting zone of BG3. And yes, if you've never noticed it before, Commander Zalk on the Nautiloid is also a Cambion, and so are the additional enemies that show up if you stick around too long during the fight. Since they all look alike and Zalk talks like they serve Zariel, that tells us that they are all devil offspring Cambions, fighting in the Blood War on the side of Hell. Meanwhile, Raphael tells us immediately what he is with the devil you do, devil you don't line. But looking at the differences, it's most likely Zalk and the other soldiers were born and raised in Hell, while Raphael was born having free reign across Torel. But then again, it's also possible Raphael is just tasked with collecting souls to send to Zariel to be used in the war. It's hard to tell, really. While souls are sought after by devils for the sake of the Blood War, it's for that very reason that they're worth so much as just currency among them. Something with high value to be traded amongst each other for different reasons. Looking at the surroundings we're teleported to when we meet Raphael, I'd say it's a safe bet we were in some city like Waterdeep or Baldur's Gate. I tried to spot anything at all in the environment that could give us a better clue as to where we were, then it hit me. He actually told us straight up where we were. He was being literal when he called this place the House of Hope. After some digging, I found out that the House of Hope was actually a temple to the goddess of Luck Timora in the city of Tantras. If you're unfamiliar with the name, it's a city far to the east of the Sword Coast, just next to Symbia and Cormanther. 
The city actually played a part in the Avatar series of books. That series was, of course, about the events during the Time of Troubles when the gods were forced to walk the world as mortals. There is a number of deitic temples in the city known as the House of Something, but it looks like the lore of the city hasn't been touched since 2nd edition. All in all, the city was known as a major hub for the faithful of Torm, the paladin god, and over the course of the last hundred years has supposedly changed into a structured society with rigid class divisions dependent on socioeconomic and political power. So with all this loosely in mind, it seems like a perfect hiding spot for a cambion like Raphael. Keep your friends close, but keep your enemies closer seems to fit quite well here. Hypothetically, he could be running this temple as a farce to trap people from time to time as a way to passively acquire souls and possibly provide sanctuary for other Cambians. If Cambians truly are ambitious fellows with the capability to be the catalyst for big events, this seems like the perfect place for him to be in. Figuring out his true intentions is another struggle entirely. Is he creating a haven for other Cambians? Who knows? Is he plotting to enact another El Turil incident? Possibly. Is he just one guy with a really nice thing going on and is just living his best life? Absolutely possible. For now, that is all I have for you on Cambians and Raphael. If you liked this video, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. And remember, until next time, stay safe out there.